Hi guys, Tony here. I've got something a little different for you today. So what I've got here is my Tyrannus and I've done the 5dB mod as you can see here. But if you take a look at the SWR reading here, you can see it's not as low as it should be. We're aiming for this reading to be really low. Something like one, two, three, four, something like that. But at the moment it's hanging around um, 17, 18. If we move the antenna a little bit vertically like this, it, it moves around. And if you move it in this direction like so, it's, it gets even worse. So I think there is um, a fix for this. Uh, I bought this uh, antenna mod from Nemo's Mini Quad Supplies in Australia. And um, it's all good, it works fine, but I'm just not happy with this SWR. I think it can be improved. So the fix that I think we can do for this is looking at Mr. Steele's video, we've got a cable like this, which is a lot thicker. The coax is a lot thicker, less losses involved with the signal coming down the cable. So the cable that's inside the Tyrannus at the moment, which comes with the mod, is very thin, and I think there's a lot of losses. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to replace it with this cable. So let's get to it. All right, here we are, guys, inside the Tyrannus. But before we start touching the internals of the transmitter, I'm going to make sure that we are not going to damage the unit. So what I mean by that is that when we move around, when we wear certain clothes, we can generate static electricity in our bodies. So if we touch any of these circuits here, we can actually cause damage to those circuits. So to prevent that, what I'm going to do is use this thing, which is a anti-static strap, which I'll put on my wrist. And what that does is it sends any static charge down the cable to here and then I've got a cable running to my computer here so just screwing into the chassis there and that takes any charge down to the earth so we can quite safely touch any of these uh, devices without any damage so I'll just get on to doing that now all right so there we go we've got my strap on here uh, and that's fantastic so I'm quite safe to to work on these components okay so looking at the cable we have here this guy all right you can see how thin that is when we compare that to the new coax you can see there's a huge difference so this is uh, one that is on a connector here as you can see it's a little snapping connector so what i'm going to do is uh, take the hot glue off remove the connector from the uh, pcb and completely desolder that connector that's on the pcb and then we'll start to um, insert this cable here to the pcb all right, so let's get to it. For the desoldering exercise, I'm going to be using a really fine tip, as you can see here. And I'll also be using a magnifying glass with a light attached, just so I can get in there really close. One of the other things I'll probably attempt to use is a sharp knife like this, just to put under the component like this, with one hand, and then with the other hand, I can solder the three joints. Um, so I'll just heat this one up first, give it a flick, it should come up, and then I can go around the others, and then eventually that will come off. All right, so I'll do that out of shot, because uh, it's a bit tricky holding onto the camera at the same time, and then I'll come back. That connector came away much easier than I thought. It actually broke apart. The outer part broke away first, then the inner part came away. So it just needs a bit of clean up to get rid of the flux that's on the PCB, and then we're all set to look at the cable. You can just use some isopropanol alcohol on a toothbrush just to give it a quick rub and it'll get rid of all the rubbish. And here's the final result, it's looking a lot neater. I was just about to cut this new cable to length when I thought, why don't we just try the existing cable from the modification kit and just cut it to length by taking the connector off and soldering it straight onto the board. If I zoom into the soldering, you can see that when I cut the cable, I left very little insulation showing on the inner part of the cable. This is so that signal losses are kept to the minimum. With the antenna in the vertical position, let's check and see what the SWR reading is now. Wow, that's amazing. So even though we're using the old cable and we've cut off the little connector, the SWR reading is, is fantastic. Um, wow, if we move it to 
45 degrees, which is where I normally have it, it's still really low. And then 90 degrees, still very, very low. So when we grab the antenna, yeah, the SWR reading is changing, which is normal. Wow, that's fantastic. I think you'll agree that those results look pretty impressive just by cutting the connector off and soldering straight to the board. And you could just leave it there and um, put the Tyrannus back together and, and away you go. But uh, I did buy this cable, so I'm actually going to go ahead and cut it and in install this into, into the machine. When watching Mr. Steele's post about the way he modded his Tyrannus, he was saying it needs to be about 84 millimeters, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm cut, going to cut it at this position here. I've used a craft knife to cut the insulation and remove it, and then I'll peel back the, the braiding to expose the insulation underneath. Now that the outer insulation's off, I just put a little bit of solder on here just to tin it, make sure it doesn't come apart, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back the insulation so it's extremely tight and really close to the outer braiding okay so I'll do that next now that all the trimming has been done and the wires have been tinned you can see how little insulation is showing now on the inner and just to give you an idea of scale here's my little finger for comparison so it's about one millimeter it's about as close as I could get so let's move on to soldering into the board now that the cable is soldered into place we need to check that everything is connected as it should be. First of all, I use one of these eyeglasses for a visual inspection. Yep, that's looking pretty good to me. And then we'll move on to an electrical test. For the electrical connection test, I'm going to use my multimeter and put it to continuity. What this means is that when the probes touch, and we get the buzzer, that means it's connected. There are three tests that we need to do. First one is the outer part of the cable is connected correctly, so that's from here to here, which it is, which is fantastic. The next test is from the inner to the inner, which it does connect, which is great. And the next, the next one is from the inner to the outer, so we should get nothing, which is correct, so that's fantastic. So the next thing I did was to remove this antenna cable and connector from where it was sitting in here. It was just hot glued in. It was just what I did when I got the 5dB mod. I knew I was going to get this uh, proper cable, so I just had it hot glued in. So that's been removed, and now you can see the proper cable um, is ready to go in. Now what I've used is just a couple of these uh, prop adapters. I just drilled the hole a bit bigger and used some epoxy resin to keep that in place. So when it goes back in here, like so, it's going to look pretty neat. Now that the epoxy resin has dried and the case is all back together, I'm sure you'll agree that's looking quite nice. So let's put the antenna back on and check the SWR. So the moment of truth has arrived. Let's check that SWR reading. Oh wow. <laughs> That is impressive. So we're actually at zero. And the antenna is sticking straight up. Okay. So we'll just put it to 45 degrees. There you go. Still zero. 90 degrees. <laughs> Still zero. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So if I just grab hold of the antenna, do you see any change? Oh, there we go. So we do see a little bit of a change there. Okay. But all in all, that is very impressive. That's much better than what I anticipated. Wow. All right, guys, if I was to summarize my experiences with the 5DBI mod for the Tyrannus, I would say that um, the mod's good. It works really well. And this cable that comes with it also works good, providing that you take off the UFL connector from the cable and also from the PCB. And that brings the SWR uh, quite low. Um, if you were to consider the um, thicker cable, the more high efficiency cable, I think it's going to be worthwhile, um, but the proof of the pudding really is in the testing, which I'll do in a future video. 
If you're interested in getting hold of the thicker, high efficiency antenna cable, I'll put a link in the description on where I got that from, and also to Mr. Steele's video, which is a good reference um, video. If you also wanted to know how I got my SWR value onto the Toronto screen here, I'll also put a link in the description of the video I used for that. It's also worth noting that you have to actually have your quadcopter running at the time, otherwise you won't get any of that SWR reading. It's a strange thing you have to do, but, but that's just the way it is. That just about wraps it up for this one, guys. But before I go, I did mention earlier I will be doing a follow-up video on the antenna mod just to see how good it is. Hopefully you've learned something new, and if you'd like to see more technical content like this, then please let me know in the comments box. Until next time, bye for now.